establish a beat? What? We're going to establish a beat? Good evening. How's everybody tonight? Is it well with your soul? If not, let's sing about it till it is. Let's stand. Oh, the bliss of this. 
Without you, we are nothing. We are really less than nothing. All of our strength, all of our power, all our mercy, all our grace, all our compassion, all our love comes from you. So Father, fill us to overflowing with your word, with your spirit. Teach us how to do that, Lord, right now. Give us ears to hear eyes to see, and a heart to obey your word and your will. It's in your name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Phil, will you do me a favor and bring up the lyrics to that song again? That was The theology in that is pretty rich, and I wanted to just spend a moment talking about that um, as we um, move into our time of, of prayer and Bible study. Um, See, see what gift of grace is Jesus my Redeemer? 
There is no more for heaven now to give. He is my joy, my righteousness and freedom, my steadfast love, my deep and boundless peace. To this I hold, my hope is only Jesus, for my life is wholly bound to his. Oh, how strange and divine. I can sing, all is mine, yet not I, but through Christ in me. The night is dark, but I am not forsaken, for by my side the Savior he will stay. I labor on in weakness and rejoicing, for in my need his power is displayed. That's pretty cool, my need his power is displayed. To this I hold, my shepherd will defend me. Through the deepest valley he will lead. Oh, the night has been won, and I shall overcome, yet not I, but through Christ in me. Now, that, this is the part that really struck me. No fate I dread. No fate I dread. I know I am forgiven. The future sure, the price that has been paid for Jesus bled and suffered for my pardon, and he was raised to overthrow the grave. With every breath, uh, to this I hold my sin. With every breath I long to follow Jesus, for he has said that he will bring me home, and day after day I, I know he will renew me until I stand with joy before the throne. To this I hold my hope is only Jesus, all the glory evermore to him. When the race is complete, still my lips shall repeat, <laughs> yet not I, but through Christ in me. It's pretty good. That's really good. Um, think about when the race is complete, to this I hold. So as we enter into a time of prayer and uh, looking in the scripture, I hope you have copies. We've got a lot of things to, to look at tonight, a lot of trees that have been sacrificed for our edification. Uh, but that's okay. That's okay, because that's why God made trees, is so you could have paper. Uh, well, that's not why God made trees. So strike that from the record. That's not what I meant. All right, so prayer list. Does everybody have a prayer list? And also, there are other pieces of paper that I'd love for you to have your hands on we're going to be using tonight uh, during our time together. Hey, it's Phil. Oh. Micro microphone man. Yeah. Um, all right, so we also have... Uh, this little half sheet on the top, it says four rules of communication. I really don't know how to tell you you need this. Oh, that's it. That was, that was lame, wasn't it? I'm sorry. Uh, but anyway, four rules of communication. Also, you have, we have uh, proud, broken people, which is from Life Action, and we will be talking about that. And also, if you are not aware, uh, this is kind of getting you ready for um, Friday. We're going to spend the month of July praying for our president. And even as I say that, Different emotions come inside of me. But you understand that this is biblical. This is what we're supposed to do. And uh, he needs our prayers. Uh, his administration needs our prayers. Our government needs our prayers. So um, regardless of your opinion, valid is it, very well maybe, we still need to do this. So we're going to spend the month of July. There's one a day for the month of July, um, 31 days that we're going to be praying. If you want to be real rebellious, you can be like the little boy who was told to sit down. He said, I'm, I'm sitting down, but on the inside, I'm still sitting up, standing up. I get it. You, if you don't want to pray, don't pray. I'm not going to force you. I'm not going to, I'm not going to have a clipboard and a whistle and say, hey, did you pray today? But I really do think that this is important for us as a congregation to be prayerful um, and to pray for what God tells us to pray for. Okay. Has anybody else noticed that this stand is not standing up? Is, am I the only one that's this is? Okay. All right. So... The game tonight is, let's see how long we can keep it standing up until it falls down again. All right. So we have those handouts, those sheets that we're going to be looking at here in just a few moments. But let's talk about the prayer list. There's a couple that I want to draw your, to your attention. There you go. Uh, a couple I want to draw your, to your attention on the prayer list. Um, Glenda just mentioned that her sister is asking for prayer. She's really having trouble physically. Uh, was falling down. Where would Glenda go? Did, oh, there. Hi. So falling down, legs. And dizzy. Okay. And her name is Donna. So we want to be sure to be praying for her. Um, also on number, um, I lost it. Um, yeah, number 37, Marty, we want to definitely be praying for him. Are you leaving? Oh, you're going to fix that. Maybe. Maybe. See the pressure now. See if you don't, yeah. Oh, use that down there yep. instead of up there. <laughs> That's perfect. That's perfect. So this is, um, this is another 
Another sign of my needing to be humbled. Okay, so the thingamajigger goes down there, and you, you twist the thingamajigger there. I'm sorry for all the technical terms. I'll try not to overwhelm you with my, my knowledge. All right, other prayer needs. Um, please be praying for number 37 for Marty. He's in Minnesota. Definitely needs our prayers. Um, on number uh, 43, uh, this is, uh, we, were, we were eating at um, Hen House. And the waitress there, is that right, Kim? Is that where we were? Uh, came and told us about this. Her son-in-law, uh, they were out uh, in a boat um, swimming, and, uh, and uh, the kids had to be a part of that to, to lose their dad like that. And then um, Miss Robin is back in Arbor Trails, right? So, yeah. Okay. Any other updates? Yes, sir. Uh, Penny and I have friends uh, up at our former church, the Boyers, and uh, keep Bill Boyer in prayer. Uh, the family is now praying that God will exercise his sovereignty and just take him home with him. This is a, an ongoing problem that started with COVID last year, mm -hmm. and we had him on the prayer list. And he got better, and now uh, hospice seems to be the only answer. So just pray for the family. And last name is B-O-Y-E-R, or is that spelled right? Yes. Okay, thank you. Bill Boyer. All right. Okay. Let's see who it is before I say anything. <laughs> All right, you got to go ahead. Let me hang on, we got the microphone coming. I was sitting under a pastor once when the phone would ring in the auditorium. He said that he, he would say, that better be Jesus calling you. My husband, Wayne Hill, has his cancer is back, and we know it's in at least six locations. Is, and wait, is this your husband, you said? Mm -hmm. Wayne Hill, my yeah. husband's cancer is back. I'm sorry to hear that. And they, they know it's in at least six different locations. And uh, he won't be able to get the biopsy for... Uh, till the 15th of next month to know what kind and how to treat. But it's the first time it was only in one lung. This time it's in six locations, so we know it's a lot worse. So please pray for him and keep him on your list. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Sorry to hear that. What else? Yes. Our daughter, Kim, number 20, she's coming along well. Good. It has a long way to go yet, but uh, much improvement. Good. And we'll go up Saturday. We'll be there over the weekend to see her. Okay. Uh, yes. Um, Jace West, um, they come to youth group mm -hmm. on Wednesdays. Um, Jace is leaving next Wednesday to go into the military, into the Army. Okay. And I would like prayers for him because he knows and I know basics going to be tough mm -hmm. and just pray for him to have the strength to get through that. Okay. Thank you. And also um, pray for little Jace that's on the ventilator now. Yeah. He's had a rough go for this whole year. Yes, he has. Keep him in our prayers. Thank you. Oh, and my daughter is coming from Arizona on Monday, and she'll be here a week for travels for them to come. Okay. And for a conversation that I want to have with her mm -hmm. for God to give, a, give me the right words. Thank Fair you. Enough. Um, Tony Thompson asked me to put a co-worker of his at the hospital um, on the prayer list. Her name is Layla, L-A-Y-L-A. -L -A. Um, she has had uh, two deaths in the family over the last couple months. Okay. And I think that was 
about the rest, her, her remaining living family. So she's going to be alone now. But pray, pray to the Lord to give her strength. Yeah. Thank you. I just want to thank you all for your prayers for Jill. We finally have a little baby girl after three miscarriages, so we're very thankful and very blessed. Um, my mom is still having problems. She's on a two-pill, one-pill, one-pill, two-pill type rotation on her drugs, her chemo, and the two-pill days are really rough on her. And my poor brother Mike, he... Uh, got to go to court once again over this silly divorce, yeah. But anyhow, I think most of it is taken care of, hopefully. And now, love his heart, he's looking at some, <laughs> some major health issues and going through testing and stuff. So if you would pray for him through these testings, it's, I feel like he's a Job right now. Wow. So uh, he's just got a lot on his plate right now. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Is he already on here or did we take him off? We took him off because the divorce, oops, I'm sorry, thank you. We took him off because the divorce was final and then stuff okay. happened. So this is your this is your brother and his name is Mike. Mike What do you Smith. want us to put on there? Physical or? Uh, yeah, physical um, health issues. Okay. All right, thank you, Kim. What else? My uh, parents, my dad is 85, and my mom's 83, 82. He's um, battling dementia, and my mom's having to take care of her. They live in Melbourne, and so um, we were there this weekend and um, kind of gave her some advice on where to go to get to get help, respite care, that kind of stuff. Um, so just wisdom in that area uh, and uh, just the right people to, to be there to help out. Thank you. Phil sure does a good job, doesn't he? I mean, my aunt in Seattle, Washington, she had also a, a cancer for uh, stage four, and she is not doing good too. So please pray for for her. Okay. You said she's in Colorado. No. Seattle. 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 Okay, I misheard. Seattle. Okay. Sorry. All right. Thank you. What else? Wow. I got one for you, Pastor. <laughs> Our daughter Nadine and her husband Matt are traveling tomorrow to Florida. So starting a new venture. Uh, Matt has yet to find employment as a pastor yet, but uh, just still waiting on the Lord. And okay. we just pray for safety of travel and they, everything will come forward for them. What's your daughter's name? Nadine. Uh-oh. Oh, okay. N A D I N E. Nadine, yeah. Okay. N A D I N E. Okay. Wow, that's kind of a big step. Okay. All right. Anyone else? Yes, ma'am. Oh, got to wait for Phil. Microphone man. <laughs> because I am the prayer person for Vacation Bible School. You're going to be hearing a lot of that. Yeah. But I just want to let you know that as you spend time in this church during the week, this is a very active church. And what I've seen this week is I've seen crafts being made for Vacation Bible School. 
I've seen decorating committee meeting. They seem to have an awful lot of fun, though. I've got to figure that out. I know we've got to work on that. Yeah. yeah. But there are things that now are really going on to put Vacation Bible School in motion. I mean, there's things been going on anyway, but now you're physically seeing it. And these teams need a lot of prayer. Yep. They need a lot of encouragement. They need a lot of, you know, support as they're going along and doing the things that they need to do. Um, and we want to pray for the children that God will continue to send us those children yeah. to us. Even though we have 175, the last count I looked at. Um, so we've got a lot of kids that are going to be here, and it's just going to be a great time. And we need to be ready. We need to be ready. We all need to point. be ready for those children. That's good. Good. Thank you. So we'll be praying for the Vacation Bible School, but also for youth camp. They'll be um, here Monday night and then leaving Tuesday. So, um, and we encourage you to be a participant of that. If you're available, come on down Monday night. I think it's open to the whole church. If I, am I remembering that right? I've slept since I've read that, so okay, all right. Yeah, so. Anyone else? So it's tempting, I'm not saying you're giving in to the temptation, but it's tempting when we hear such heavy concerns and heavy needs is to be in despair, but we serve a God who knows our needs before we even ask them, that has the answers before we even know what the need is. So we, um, we definitely want to have the faith of, of coming to him, um, that he's called us to pray, that he's given us that responsibility, that privilege, um, to give him that burden. And uh, many times when prayer is mentioned in the scripture, it's coupled with thanksgiving. And that may seem odd because we don't always get the answers that we are thankful for, but part of that is because we are thankful that we can come to a God who is always faithful and that he always answers. Doesn't always answer the way I want him to answer or maybe you want him to answer, but he always, always answers. And he takes care of his own. So uh, let's, spend, let's spend some um, time in prayer tonight. If you'd pray with, with me, please. Lord Jesus, we come before you as your, your church. I thank you for the men and women uh, that are represented within this, this building, um, all ages. Um, in the entire place. I, I thank you for their, their faith. I thank you for the chance to, to come before you in prayer. And even now, guard our, our, our minds and our hearts, our thoughts, that we would not come before you in an unrighteous way, in an unholy way, but in honesty and um, humility. Pray that your will be done. I pray for the sensitivity to see that we are talking to the one and only, that we are coming into your throne room and that you and your, your sovereignty and in your authority you the creator of heaven and earth everything we bring to you you can more than take care of abundantly more and so it's with these burdens that we come and we lay them at your feet and we ask for these that are hurting tonight these that are worried these that are struggling emotional issues spiritual issues physical issues we pray for these that are overwhelmed right now and perhaps don't feel or even think that there's a way out. And Lord, we pray for your light to shine in their life right now. Help them. Father, I thank you for these young people that are about to go to camp. I thank you for the young people who are about to participate in Vacation Bible School. Make us good stewards of that. We don't take that for granted. We don't assume that it's going to be a success. We trust and we ask that you bless and you, you help. Even now, increase the excitement and the joy of uh, the youth hearing more about you, of the, the children learning uh, what it means to be a faithful follower of you. Help us. Father, I pray specifically for these individuals that we've been talking about, the ones that are struggling for our brother Wayne and his, his needs. 
the cancer coming back, for Miss Robin and her recovery, uh, for Marty and his, his very serious condition. It just seems like the list goes on, but every person that you love and you take care of and you treasure, we lift them to you. We pray for arrangements with, with Eric's parents. We pray for uh, guidance with uh, a young man going into the military. Lord, we pray for your hand on our family members, our needs. Lord, I pray for this month of July that you would turn our hearts towards you. We don't really pretend to like what's happening in Washington. We don't, like, we don't pretend to be in favor of politicians. But we want to be obedient to you. We want to be used by you to advance your kingdom in very not kingdom-oriented government. Lord, I pray for your will to be done. And as we open your word, Lord, I pray that you would give us sensitivity and uh, hear from you. Help us. Help me. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's a lot to be praying about. A lot going on in our homes and what's happening. I did not get PowerPoint done today. So I am going to ask that you be patient with me. Um, that's one of the reasons I, I printed out the, the half sheet is so you'll at least have it in front of you as we are talking about this tonight. Four rules of communication. If you turn with me, please, to Ephesians chapter 4. We're going to be looking at this passage, and this is not this does not originate with me. There are, there are a number of resources that this is a culmination of, as well as the sheet, the half sheet with um, humility, the proud and broken. The reason that we're going down this road and we're talking about these things is because of life action exposing us to some of the, their teaching, which most of it is, is, was not new. It's things we talked about, but it, it kind of focuses in on our walk with God and our need to be sensitive to Him. And and one of the things I wanted to do on Wednesday nights as we, we continue, Lord willing, um, is, is kind of revisit a lot of the topics that were brought up and dig a little bit into them and get a sense of, of what we're supposed to take away from that. God does care about how we talk, about how we speak, about how we receive. Um, I, I, I wish I could tell you this was easy. I wish I could tell you that it doesn't really matter how you talk, how you communicate. This is huge. This is, this, is, this is about how you and I, as followers of Christ, are good stewards with how we speak as well as how we listen and how we communicate with each other. And this four rules of communication comes out of Ephesians chapter 4, and we're going to be unpacking this for just a few minutes tonight. But trust me when I say there are many other passages that I could take you to that talk about the taming the tongue in James, uh, talking about how we need to be careful how we speak in the, in the Gospels. Um, there's, there's so much that deals with um, our tongue and our speech and our, our attitudes as we uh, love each other, as we are devoted to the fellowship. So let's, let's dig into this just for a few minutes tonight, and let me just kind of overview for you and let God do what God does and uh, perhaps uh, listen as he speaks. Ephesians chapter 4, I want to take you first to, to verse 20 um, in Ephesians chapter 4. I want to show you what Paul is doing. So this is, this is, if you don't have your scripture with you, man, you're going to miss out because this is really good. You want to, you want to see this um, in front of you. Uh, you can grab one of the Bibles. Um, the, the only time I'm ever going, to, ever going to tell you it's okay to steal is if you need one of these pew Bibles. Uh, we will replace it. Uh, take it. We, we want the Bibles to be used. Um, now, don't take it and go sell it. That's just tacky. But uh, if you need a Bible, take a Bible. Uh, but... So if you don't have one, grab one of the pew Bibles, uh, go to your phone. Um, if you see somebody kind of friendly looking down the aisle, scoot over and look over their shoulder, whatever you need to do. But I really want you to see this. The book of Ephesians is divided, and this is what Paul does on a regular basis. It's divided between um, doctrine and duty. It's, it's divided between orthodoxy and orthopraxy. It's how we understand our identity in Christ, and then it talks about how we live that out, how we walk out our faith, how we live out our faith. 
So the first three chapters deal with, with our identity, uh, the forgiveness we have in Christ, the, the new life we have, how the dividing wall of hostility has been abolished because of Jesus Christ, how we now have faith in him and we have this new identity of one person in Christ, all the wonderful things. And then in chapter four, he says, now because of this, this is how we're going to live this out. This is how we are going to live. You scoot down to verse 17. He says, this is how the Gentiles lived. And this is how they live. And this is how you used to live, but this is not how you live anymore. Now you live in the light. You used to be in the dark. Now you're in the light. So he scoots down to verse 20. He says, this is how you came to know Christ. Assuming you heard about him, taught by him, as the truth is in Jesus. And then you've got verse 22, 23, and 24, which, by the way, are foundational verses in terms of how you and I grow in our relationship with God. So if you haven't heard these before, I'm almost envious of you because this is one of the most critical theological points of sanctification, of growing in your faith. In verse 22, 23, and 24. So when, and he does the same thing in Colossians, by the way, but we're just talking, and Romans, it doesn't matter. 22, verse 22, Romans, um, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 22. He says, to take off your former way of life, the old self that is corrupted by deceitful desires. So he's saying, you've got to take off what you were. And then in verse 24, he says to put on. So you've got this put off, put on. Verse 24, put on the new self, the one created according to God's likeness in righteousness and purity of the truth. So you've got this new identity in Christ that you put on because of your relationship with Jesus. So it isn't about just saying a prayer or walking an aisle. Those can be outward signs of an inward transformation. But what he's saying is, is that once you accept Christ as Savior, you no longer live as the Gentiles do, the futility of their thinking. Now you're walking in the light. And part of that is a daily decision to put off and to put on. Put off what was and put on what is. So if you ever have that thought cross the back of your brain, kind of rattle around in your membrane, that I don't get it. Why am I not doing this Christian thing? Why does everybody else seem to have it figured out and I don't have it figured out? Because it's not a passive activity. You and I are to be before our Lord and Savior on a moment by moment by moment basis saying, Lord, help me to put off what no longer belongs to me and help me to put on what does, this righteousness, this purity, this truth. The, la the latch, the, the key to this is verse 23. See, in 22 is take off, verse 24 is put on, but in verse 23, to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. It is a battle for the mind. Your faith is going to grow when you consciously, intentionally come before your Savior and say, Lord, this emotion I'm feeling, this attitude I have, this action I'm participating in, that's my old self. I need help renewing my mind so that I can become more like you. This is, this is the sanctification. This is growing in his image. This is how all this plays out. So what he does from there, moving on in Ephesians chapter 4, he says, and I'm going to show you, and this is not the only example. He's going to spend the next three chapters talking about it. But he says, he's, I'm going to show you first. Let me just give you an idea of this put off and put on. Let me show you how your mind is supposed to be renewed in the spirit. Let me show you what, what God is going to do inside of you. First off, in verse 25, he says, Therefore, putting away lying, speak the truth, each one to his neighbor, because we are members of one another. Okay, did you see it? No longer old self, put off, lying, deceitfulness, being disingenuous, uh, playing a part, politics, hypocrisy. Those are not what we do. Now, because we are members of the body of Christ, because we belong to each other, we are going to be honest with each other. We're going to be truthful. And when you get to your little outline, your little sheet, this is the first one of the, the rules. This is the first principle that we get to in terms of how we speak. We speak with vulnerability and honesty. We do not think in the back of our mind what I wonder that person wants to hear me say. We say what is truly going on inside of us. Did you hear what I just said? Because I struggle with this. It isn't people-pleasing. It isn't trying to act good and sound good and be good. It's if you're hurting, you have to be honest enough to say you're hurting. If you're struggling, you have to say honestly enough to say you're struggling. Now, you don't need to air your dirty laundry before everybody. That's why I appreciated during Life Action when he was up here, he controlled the microphone. And he was very quick to tell me he was going to do that. Because this is not about everybody needs to know everything. That is not the case. No. 
What we're saying is, even in your most simple conversations, God cares about truth because according to verse 23, 24, when he's gearing up for this, he says, purity of truth. He says, it matters. You don't walk in the dark, you walk in the light. So we've got to be honest with each other. That means no lying. That means being honest and transparent. It, it means that you don't assume you know what the other person is thinking. Okay, now I'm going to get really in your business, and I, 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 I want to say I apologize, but I kind of, if you don't have any fruit or vegetables or tomatoes, you're not going to throw them at me, but have you ever said to someone, I know what you're thinking? Have you ever had someone tell you, I know what you're thinking? You don't. You do not know. You might have a pretty good guess, but you don't know. You can't judge other people's hearts. That's not our job. And many times when we talk about being honest, being transparent, being real, what we do, oh, I wish I could tell you. Just the last 24 hours I've had this conversation with more people I want to talk about. We assume the worst of other people. And we think that they said that because of their heart, because of what they were wanting, when we don't know that. It's possible, but that's not truth. So we've got to be careful about how we receive as well as how we speak, that we are transparent and honest. I'm gonna, I could stop right there, and I don't want any amens, but I could stop right there, and I could tell you this is something we've got to work on. I've got to work on this. You've got to work on this. Because we, we tend to kind of go to our default and just assume we know what everyone wants or what they want to hear. We've got to be honest. Speak the truth. Each to his neighbor because we are members one another. So in the imagery of the body of Christ, let me do this real quick. Your elbow asks your head, how are you feeling? Your head has a headache. Your elbow really does want to help because your elbow is going to talk to your hand to get the aspirin, to get the water, to help the headache. But your head is a little proud. And your head is saying, you know, I'm fine when you're not. Your toe got stumped and is starting to bleed, so your finger wants to take care of the Band-Aid to be able to take care of the toe, but the toe is too proud, to be honest, that they need help. See where I'm going with this? We don't lie to ourselves and our bodies. We, we take care of each other, and that's what he's referring to, be honest. Um, it's more than just lying. It's also omission. It's, it's more than just commission. It's realizing that we can't just assume uh, that we know what the other person is thinking. We can't just uh, leave something out. Um, my catchphrase, I got this from Dave Ramsey, and it's funny how people haven't heard it before, but people ask me how I'm doing. I usually say better than I deserve because it's true. <laughs> I'm doing better than I deserve, but also because I'm not lying. I am doing better than I deserve, even when I'm not doing... Anyway, you, you can have that. Uh, you can give credit to Dave if you want to. I don't care. All right. Coming back to Ephesians, scoot back up to verse 15. And look at what it, the way he says this, speaking the truth in love, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. He says, but speaking the truth in love, let us grow in every way into him who is the head Christ. So speaking the truth is not an excuse to be cruel, to be unkind. Speaking the truth in love means that we understand who we're speaking to. We have enough of a relationship that we know how much they can receive and to what degree, and we can bring them along if need be. We can give them a little bit, we can give them a lot. Corey Ten Boom was on a train as, as a small girl, and she started to ask her father about sexual sin. She was just a little girl. Don't be scared, I'm not going to talk about it. But she was asking her dad, dad about it, and he said, I'll tell you later, I'll tell you later. And as the train stopped, there was luggage above the seats, and her dad said, Corey, go ahead and get that suitcase from up there. And she tried, she really did, but she was so small and the suitcase was so big that she couldn't handle it. And she, he said, sweetheart, you asked me a few minutes ago about sexual sin. Trust me, when I think you're big enough to handle it, to hold it, to carry it, I'll tell you that you're not big enough yet. You gotta be sensitive. Know who you're talking to, know the truth, don't lie, but be, be conscious of that. That's rule number one. You keep going in the passage, Ephesians chapter four, verse 26. He says, be angry and do not sin. Don't let the sun go down on your anger and don't give the devil an opportunity. So the second rule is keep current. 
One of the biggest problems we have is keeping score, which goes against 1 Corinthians 13. We want, we want to, to hold, keep record of wrong. We want to make sure that everyone is held accountable according to our standards. There are, that is not the case. He says when you've got an issue, you deal with it, you keep the list short, you take care of it quickly. I was, I was, in a, um, I was listening to a podcast uh, a few days ago, and I love, I love this illustration. So even if it doesn't apply, it's really good, so I'm going to share it anyway. But he was talking about um, temptation. He was talking about how we tend to give in to temptation. And he, was, he says it's, it's like a river, and you've you got the uh, upstream, midstream, and downstream. And you don't want to get in the river. But if you get in the river upstream, then it doesn't take much to get back out. But if you get midstream, you've got to go back upstream and get out. Or if you go downstream, you gotta get, you gotta, you're in and you've got to go mid and all the way up. He says what we do with temptation and what we do with sin is that we get into the river upstream. And the opportunity for repentance and forgiveness and renewal is right there. But we say, I can handle it. And we keep floating to midstream. And the more we float, the harder it is for us to get out of it in the, in the cycle of sin and the depravity of mind and the, the hardness of our conscience. And so what happens is we get midstream and we say, oh, I wish I'd gotten out when I could have, but now it's harder. And then you go all the way downstream and it's even harder to get out. It doesn't mean God's grace can't handle it, but it means it's going to be more damaging. It's going to be more consequential. There's going to be more happening to you because you didn't get out upstream. When the Bible talks about temptation, about resisting temptation, and about asking for forgiveness, for the record, hear me, please, read my lips. I don't know why I got presidential phrases on my mind. But anyway, read my lips. The sooner you deal with this, the better for everybody, especially you. Because if you think you can handle it, if you think that it's no big deal, you think that it's going to keep getting, it's going to get better eventually. And the same is true with how we deal with our anger and our attitudes toward other people. They, oh, that'll, go, that'll be fine. Uh, time heals all wounds. That's not in the Bible. There's, there's this, this issue we have with communication that we've got to deal with it sooner than later. Now, there's, there is some sensitivity to that. You've got to know the right time. You've got to know the right way to do it. And um, we could talk more about that uh, later. But the idea is taming our tongue and understanding that we've got to not allow the devil to get a foothold. Um, do you notice... What he says in verse 27, don't give the devil an opportunity, which he knows very well how to do that. And I think it was on your sheet. Let me, let me look. But is this where the six questions are? Okay, so let's, let's pretend like I've never read this sheet before. Let's look. So you ask yourself these questions in terms of keeping current. Do you have the facts? And if you don't, be honest. You don't know. If you don't know, you don't know. So you don't, you don't speculate. You don't assume. Uh, should love hide it? It comes back to the passage that talks about love cover, covers a multitude of sins. Um, is it something that you, you need to, to let go? Uh, that's uh, 1 Peter chapter 4, verse, verse 8. Is the timing right? That's Proverbs 15, 23, where it talks about um, you, you know what the sweet season of when you should deal with it. Is my attitude right? Don't even get me started on that one. That's the whole book of Ephesians. Uh, are my words loving and constructive? And have I prayed about it? So you, you ask these questions when you're talking with people. I've heard this before, the, the, the thought, well, I'm just being honest. No, sometimes you're just being a jerk. Um, but the part of speaking the truth in love is being sensitive to the Spirit as you're speaking. I saw a commercial years ago. Um, James Thompson was talking about uh, a husband called in and said, I can't lie to my wife, so I need to tell her everything I think, right? And he said, sure. If you want to be killed or divorced within the next month, that's fine. Go right ahead. <laughs> Not everything that crosses your brain is true, is sanctifying, is holy, is right. And that everything that crosses your brain stays there because not every thought is from God. So do not tell everybody everything you're thinking. You don't want to know everything I'm thinking, and I don't want to know everything you're thinking. That's part of this talking about being sensitive to the timing. All right, so you keep going, verse 29. No foul language should come from your mouth, but only what is good for building up someone in need, so that it gives grace to those who hear. My favorite verse in Ephesians chapter 4. Well, I'll be careful. It's, how about in the top 32 verses? My, one of my favorite verses in Ephesians chapter 4 gives grace to those who hear. Literally what it's saying is, is that when you open your mouth, you are breathing grace 
into the life of the person you're speaking to. Think about the imagery of that, that you and I have the privilege, by the grace of God, to be able to give grace to other people. So the question is, here it is, is when you're done with a conversation, is the person you're talking to lifted up or pushed down? Because if they're pushed down, that is not God's grace. Now, sometimes he uses us, many times he uses us, to be able to confront sin, to be able to admonish, to be able to exhort, to be able to correct, to be able to train. And it's not always fun and it's not always pretty, but it's still grace because we love them too much to let them go all the way downstream. We want to catch them while they're still up here so they can get out easier. It's grace. So both giving and receiving, are we being sensitive to what they need? Breathing grace to those who hear. And you continue in verse 30, and it's no accident that this is talking about the Holy Spirit. Don't grieve the Holy Spirit. You were sealed by him for the day of redemption. When you speak grace into someone else's life, you are imitating our Savior. You're imitating our Lord. You're imitating our God. And he's saying when you don't, when you let anger rule, when you let the devil have a foothold, when you let your mouth get you in trouble, you are causing more issues than than solving any. So the way it puts it in rule number three is attack the problem, not the people. No unwholesome words, don't attack the character, don't tear down, be passive. The way I like to put it, and I mentioned this at the funeral last week, is their name should be safe in your mouth. Their name should be safe in your mouth. It it is is a matter of, of holding them in respect for being made in the image of God without attacking the person, deal with the problem. I was talking to my um, Holy Spirit in residence last night, uh, which is my wife, and I, I, I asked her, um, how do I deal with this current situation that I'm working through? And she said, you have one enemy. And she's right. It's not a human flesh. It's not a person. It's the devil. It's the evil one. So keep that in mind. We don't attack the people. We attack the problem. And there's a whole other thing on that. We can talk about the pronouns we use. We can talk about attacking someone's character versus attacking what they've done. There's all sorts of things we could go down that road, but the point is um, to speak, breathe grace into their life. And then you get the last one, act, don't react. This is verse 31 and verse 32. Let's talk about this real quick. He says, let all bitterness, anger, and wrath, shouting, and slander be removed from you along with all malice because you're putting off the things of the old and you're putting on the new. So he says, that's the old, that's what you used to be. That's used to how you used to be known. In, in the heart of hearts, your anger, your wrath, your wrath, your shouting, your slander be removed from you along with all malice. You could have the best intentions and the best message and you can negate it by being a bully. You can negate it by being angry. You can negate it by shouting and slander. And trust me, I've been in enough arguments that you talking louder does not mean you're winning the argument, okay? Just write it down. That doesn't mean you're winning. And me stopping listening and talking doesn't mean that I've, con- I've con- conceded to your point. Okay, maybe I should, I'm giving you too much information. But anyway, here we go. Let all bitterness, anger, and wrath, shouting and slander be removed from you along with all malice. That's what you took off. That's not you anymore. By the renewing of your mind, you put on, verse 32. This is Jesus. Kind, compassion, forgiving, just as God also forgave you in Christ. To put on this kindness, to put on this relationship with God is not man-made. It is not priming the pump. It is not pretending. It's because back in verse 22, 23, and 24, you submitted to the authority of Christ and you said, I need help with this. I need you to give me a heart of compassion toward my enemy, to the one I'm arguing with, to the one that, that is disagreeing with me. I need help with this. So the temptation is to be defensive. The temptation is to be bitter. The temptation is to lash out it's because that's, that comes easy. But just as he loves us, we are to love others. And his love is compassionate and kind, forgiving, just as he has forgiven us. So let's clarify this, and then I'll be done. When you talk about forgiveness, when the Bible talks about forgiveness, it is not forgetting. It is not denial. It is not denial. And heaven forbid, and I mean that literally, that it is negating or minimizing the sin that has been committed against you. If anything, it's bringing into full spotlight how wrong this situation is. Forgiveness 
is where you let go of the, the control and you say, I'm not going to be the judge. I'm not going to be the jury. I'm not going to be the hangman. I don't have control in this situation. I'm going to let God be the man of vengeance. I'm going to let him be the one to take care of this. That takes a lot of faith. And I, I've heard this and I've thought this many times over the years. Well, that's just not fair because God's going to forgive them just like he forgave me. And they're going to get away with this. Yeah, probably. Because Jesus paid for that. Just like he paid for you. If you, if you are eager for re revenge, you're eager for a pound of flesh, you're really going to have to renew your mind. Because the old person would have done that. The new person, that's not our character. That's not who we are. So, just real quick, before I close in prayer, can this apply to anything that we're going through today? Got anything? Any kind of connection here at all? If none of this mean, meant anything to you, can I live with you, please? Because <laughs> I'd love to see what your world looks like. But anytime you open your mouth, anytime you're in the, in the vicinity of another human being, and actually you don't even have to be <laughs> with anybody else. This could be all inner turmoil, just you talking to yourself. You need this. We need this. This is why we come to the scripture, how we react to other people, how we live and love other people. We do it because we, have, we are loved by him, and out of response for that, we, we act in kind. Would you pray with me, please? Oh, before we pray, before I forget, we're going we're gonna to keep talking about this, the, the sheet, but I just wanted to, I wanted to introduce it to you tonight, uh, the proud people, broken people. Um, I'm not going to give you time necessarily to do it right now, but I want you to take this home, uh, look over it, and if you, um, if you walk into this exercise thinking that you've got it down pretty good, give me a call when you're done reading this. So we'll, It's going to humble you. It's going to humble you. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Thank you for the way you give us um, instruction and direction, how to live out our faith. Lord, I pray for the, the conflicts that are in our lives right now that you would give us your grace to breathe into other people's lives. May we be that, that ambassador for you. And Lord, I pray for God-given wisdom for our friends and family, for our church members, our neighbors, co-workers, who need your grace just as much as we do. Pray you'll help them. In Christ's name we pray, amen.